Hello everyone, happy to see you here on my channel High Mathematics and today we have a really interesting question 1 to the x equal to minus 2. On the first side, a lot of students might be saying, hey mister, this is like very easy question, we have exponential equation, we don't have like a huge numbers, but when they look closer right here, 1 to the x all the time is equal to 1, because we know that x equal to, for example, 100, 1000, doesn't matter this power, 1 to the power of like 1000, 100, all the time is equal to 1. And 1 is not equal to minus 2, and it turns into a big argument, a lot of students argue with each other and right now I'm going to explain you how can I solve this challenge correctly and step by step. But first of all imagine that you're sitting in your school and you have this challenge on your exam. How can you write how can you solve this challenge? First of all you're gonna apply natural log on both sides. As a result what do we have right here? We have natural log of 1 to the x on the left side equal to natural log of minus 2. Right now this x will come down right here because this is like the main log property the main log trick. As a result we have x times natural log 1 equal to natural log minus 2. Really great. And the last step you need to divide both sides by natural log 1. So your answer, if you're sitting, for example, on your exam, x is equal to natural log minus 2 all over natural log 1. And you know that natural log 1 equal to 0, but natural log 2 we can't find it because this is like a not real, no real number right here. Natural log minus two does not exist. So let's write that this natural log two does not does not exist, and it turns into a big argument. But in terms of school knowledge, this is enough for you. You solve this challenge. You just find your x, but you can't divide by zero, and you can't find this natural log minus two. But in the same way, this is enough for you. And right now, here is the main thing. Right here, we don't have like a real. So right here, no real no real no real roots we don't have our we don't have our real roots right here so this is enough for you when you're sitting on your exam and you remember you have this challenge in your school this is absolutely enough for you but for math lovers i'm going to show you this approach in terms of complex numbers so we will find our x so i hope you will enjoy it and i hope you will understand my my explanation first of all i'm going to start with this Euler's identity this is really important identity in our question so this identity looks like e to the power i times theta equal to cosine theta, yeah, plus i times sine theta. This identity is great for us because we have complex unit. So we have i and this is really great and we don't we know that we don't have like real roots right here. So this identity is with, will help us a lot because we have right here our i. Right now for those who like don't, don't like it, don't understand this identity, let's prove this identity real quick. So let's let's check this identity for example when theta equal to zero. Yeah check it. So theta equal to zero what we will have as a result? We will have e to the power i times 0, yeah, equal to cosine 0 plus i sine 0. Sine 0 equal to 0, cosine 0 equal to 1, and e to the power 0 equal to 1. So as you can see, 1 equal to 1 plus 1, yeah, this is absolutely great thing for us. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this part once more because this is like a basic uh, general uh, explanation about about Euler's identity, but right now we're going to plug in a substitution right here, okay? But what substitution? Our substitution looks like that. Theta, theta equal to 2k pi. 2k pi, this is our substitution. k is integer right here, so k is 1, two and dot 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 a lot of this integer value so instead of this theta let's gonna plug in this 2k pi let's do this right now so as a result what do we have right here e to the power so we have e to the power i times 2k pi equal to cosine 2k pi yeah plus i sine 2k pi Okay, so we're going to plug in this theta, this 2k pi instead of this theta. And right now, the main thing, the key moment right here, I'm going to look what will happen when k equal to 1, when k equal to 2, when k equal to 3. Let's look what will happen. So from this case, this is like a general identity, so we need this identity all the time. And right now, let's going to plug in 4k, okay, so 4k equal to, for example, let's go with 1. This is like a first value. And let's look what will happen when k equal to 1. When k equal to 1, as a result, what do we have right here? e to the power i times 2 pi equal to cosine 2 pi, yeah? Plus i sine 2 pi. Really great. But in the same way, cosine 2 pi, we can easily find it because this is like cosine 360. There's like a period equal to 1. And right here we have sine 2 pi. In this case, 
is assigned to pi equal to 0. As a result, 1 plus 0, because i times 0 equal to 0, as a result we have we have 1. So when k equal to 1, this expression on the left side is equal to is equal to 1. Really great, but let's see what will happen when k equal to 2, for example, okay? So for k equal to 2, what will happen? I hope you see it right now that we will have like a lot of periods. Let's do this. So e to the power i times 4 pi equal to k sine 4 pi, okay, plus i times sine 4 pi. Really great, and as I told before, cosine 4 pi equal to 1, because there's like a period, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi in the future, yeah? And then sine 4 pi equal to, equal to 0. As a result, 1 plus 0 equal to 1. Really great, when k equal to 2, this expression on the left side is also equal to 1. Right now, let's check k equal to 3. Finally, let's check k equal to 3. Let's see what will happen there. So for k equal to 3, really great, so we have e to the power i times 6 pi equal to cosine 6 pi, yeah, plus i sine 6 pi, really great, right now cosine 6 pi equal to 1, sine 6 pi equal to 0, as a result 1 plus 0 equal to 1, and right now I hope you see this, this pattern, so this expression all the time is equal to 1, but let's check it once more, let's see what will happen uh, finally when k equal to, for example, let's go with 4, yeah, uh, k equal to, a k equal to 4, we will have like e to the power i times 8 pi, yeah, equal to cosine 8 pi plus i sine 8 pi, 8 pi, and right now, cosine 8 pi, this is the same period, equal to 1, and i8 I 8 pi equal to, equal to 0. As a result, 1 plus 0 equal to 1. And right now, I hope you see this, uh, this pattern. So when k equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, this is like a period of this sine and cosine. As a, as a result, all the time we will have 1. And 1 in real numbers, because we don't have like a complex unit, because when when um, right here is 0 all the time, this 0 multiplied this complex unit. So as a result, we have all the time 1, which is really great. But for those who don't understand, who don't trust this, this pattern right here, we can also check, for example, let's go with for k equal to, let's go with 50, doesn't matter, let's go with 50, and right here we will have all the time this k5, 6, 7, and we will have all the time, all the time 1. And as a result, when k equal to 50, what we will have e to the power i times 2k pi, as a result, times 2 pi, we have 100 pi, yeah, equal to cosine 100 pi plus i sine 100 pi. And it changed nothing, basically, because this is like a period, cosine 100 pi, or 200, 1000 pi, we have even numbers, so as a result, we have all the time, we have 1. And right here, sine 100 pi equal to, equal to 0, so we have all the time, we have 1. And why I write this pattern for you? Because I hope you see right now that this expression, when k is 1, 2, 3, 4, 50, 100, 1000, 1 million, this expression on the left side, and in terms of uh, in terms of identity, this is e to the power i times 2k pi, all the time this expression is equal to, equal to 1. So we can write our final, final thing right here. So let's split this part, let's split this identity. Euler's identity part, and let's let's write a final note from this thing. E to the power i times 2k pi is equal to 1, but k is integer, so k is z, yeah, k equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, when k is integer, we have this, this equation, but in the beginning, what we had in the beginning? We had 1 to the x, equal to minus 2, okay? And this expression equal to 1 when k is integer. So right now let's gonna plug in this e to the power i times 2k pi instead of this one right here, okay? So let's do this right now, let's see what will happen. As a result, we will have e to the power i times 2k pi, okay? So right here we have this line, uh, to the power x, okay? To the power x is equal to not 1, we have right here minus 2, okay? So this expression is going instead of this one to the power x equal to minus minus 2. Really great. Right now, how can we solve this type of equation? We need to apply a natural log on both sides, yeah? So when we apply natural log on both sides, as a result, we have natural log of, of, of what we think, e to the power i times 2k pi x 
equal to natural log of minus minus two. Really great. Right now, uh, we're gonna cancel this uh, natural log and this e, and as a result, this power will come down. Will come down right here. As a result, we will have the next thing. We will have e times two k pi x times natural log e equal to natural log minus two. Really great. And right now, let's divide both sides by e times two k pi. When we divide both sides to left side by e times 2k pi and the right side by e times 2k pi. As a result from here we cancel this expression nature log e equal to 1 and as a result we have only our x on the on the left side. So from here our x equal to our x equal to nature log of minus 2 divided by i 2k Pi. And this looks like our answer, but I'm going to show you a really great approach right here. We're going to multiply numerator and denominator by i. And when we multiply this by i, so from here we multiply by i and right here by i. This i with this i gives us i square. And in terms of complex number, we know that i square equal to minus 1. Okay? i square equal to minus 1. So as a result, our general sign will be minus, will be negative, okay? x equal to minus. In, in our numerator, we have i natural log of minus 2 all over i times, uh, no, we, have, no, we don't have i error here because we cancel this. We have 2k pi, okay? 2k pi. But we need to mention that k is not equal to 0. k is integer, k is integer number for example k equal to one two three and a lot of a lot of these values right now we're going to simplify this final answer this looks like final answer but in the same way we can simplify our natural log minus two because in terms of mass we know that it's like not possible natural log of negative value this is a very bad thing in terms of mass but in terms of mass in real numbers this is really bad thing in terms of complex numbers we can easily find this natural log minus two so right now i'm going to show you how can you do this and then we're going to plug in this expression i'm going to show you this in in a few minutes we're going to plug in this instead of this natural log minus two we're going to plug in this expression so let's do this right now Okay, so in a previous step, we find that x equal to minus i natural log minus 2 all over 2k pi. And I told before that we're going to simplify this natural log of minus 2 in terms of complex number, because in terms of real numbers, it can take place because natural log negative, it can it not like possible in, for us in terms of in terms of real numbers. So right now, let's simplify. Let's find what is equal to natural log minus 2. And uh, how can we simplify this? We can rewrite it in another way. We can write it as natural log of minus one times two. We can also write it in this way. And in terms of in terms of uh, like a natural log, we can also use our property natural log of a product equal to a thumb of these natural logs. So in our case, this is equal to natural log of minus one here yeah? times or like plus not times. We have plus natural log natural log natural log two. Really great. So this is like the main log property. We change nothing. And right now, this minus 1 can be also written in terms of Euler's identity. So we can write it in terms of E. How can we rewrite it? We can write this one as natural log. And right now, we're going to plug in with E, with Euler's identity. So E to the power I times pi plus 2 pi. And this period, let's call with M. Okay? We had K, we, have K, we call this as M. And we close parentheses and plus natural log natural log 2. Right now, this power will come down and we cancel natural log and this e. We can cancel this and this power will come down. So as a result, we will have i times pi plus 2 pi m and plus natural log 2, okay, plus natural log 2. Right now, we can easily factor pi from here, the period. So let's do this. So we have right here 2m, okay, 2m plus 1 times i times pi and plus natural log natural log 2 and uh, this is in terms of complex numbers so and and m is z so when m is integer and this is our complex a uh, complex expression right here because we have real part and imaginary real part and imaginary part so right now let's gonna plug in this expression we have all the time equal sign so let's gonna plug in this expression into this spot instead of this natural log minus 2 so instead of this natural log minus 2 we're gonna plug in this expression in the first in the previous equation so as a result x equal to minus i times this expression 2m plus 1 
times i times pi, i times pi, and plus natural log 2. Okay, really great. And we divide all of the thing by 2k pi, don't forget about it, by 2k pi. Right now, let's simplify this a little bit. These are like our final step, because we can easily multiply this i by this parentheses. As a result, x equal to, we have right here minus, inside parentheses we will have i square, okay, i square times pi times 2m plus 1, okay, and plus i natural log 2, natural log 2, and we divide all of the thing by 2k pi, 2k pi. Really great, but don't forget that m is integer and all of the thing is also like take place right here. k is not equal to zero, k is z from here, don't forget about this, okay? So right now let's simplify this, i square equal to minus one. Don't forget about this, i square equal to minus one. So instead of this i square, let's gonna plug in minus one. As a result, we have x equal to, we have right here minus, minus pi times two m plus one and plus i natural log natural log 2 and all over 2k pi 2k pi right now this minus this minus gives us plus and as a result we can easily write our final answer that x equal to so x equal to right here we have plus so we have let's start with for example with 2m plus 1 yeah we have 2m plus 1 times pi and minus i natural log 2 and all over all over 2k pi and this is looks like a final answer. We can simplify this more right here. We have nature log, we have i, we have k pi. Yeah, this is great. We have m. And we know everything about k, k and m. So right now, let's, let's write our final answer. It looks like our final answer to this challenge. But basically, our final answer looks like that. In the beginning, we had 1 to the x equal to minus 2. Let's write our question. And let's write our, our answer to our, to our question. Okay, x equal to... We have right here 2m plus 1 times pi minus i natural log 2 and all over 2k pi. But k is not equal to 0. k is integer. Okay. k uh, 1, 2, 3, and dot, dot, dot. And of course, m from here is also our integer. m is integer and this is our our solution to this to this question of course this is not like general solution we can say that x equal to like uh, this uh, expression all the time because we don't know what will happen when k is equal to like uh, three half like uh, 1.333 like in period yeah we don't know what will happen there but when k is, in, is not equal to zero when k is integer and when m is integer this is like a great solution, yeah, when uh, in terms of complex number. Yeah. In the previous step, we proved that that we can solve this challenge in, in real numbers because what we had in the beginning, we had the thing, we had x equal to natural log minus 2 all over natural log, natural log 1. Right here we have 0, this one does not exist right here, so we can't find our numerator. Also, we can't divide by, by 0. So it's like it's like a not possible thing in terms of real numbers. So this is like not our solution in terms of in terms of real numbers because we don't know we divide it by zero. We don't know what will happen when we divide it by zero. We can't divide by zero in terms of school knowledge. Yeah. So this is our um, approach when we have, for example, you, if you sit on your exam and in school, this is like enough for you because you don't know about Euler's identity. I guess about it. Yeah. And, and if you study in, for example, in university, I hope you will know this identity and this identity will help you to solve this to solve this challenge okay so this is my explanation to this challenge this is not like a general solution because we don't know when k for example equal to a decimal when k equal to like 9 over 2 like 4.5 we don't know what will happen there but when k is not equal to 0 k is integer and m is integer this is our solution and we proved it before we use all known Ehrlich identity we don't find like a, a wrong equations we don't find like a wrong wrong solution we just use Ehrlich identity and that it but we have a lot of a lot of things, then k equal, is not equal to 0, k is integer, and when k 1, 2, 3, and m is integer. So when these, these rules works, our answer is this one. 
But when these root rules do not work, we don't know what will happen there. We don't know. We don't know a solution. We don't know how can we solve this challenge in terms of in terms of complex number. Maybe with the graph, with the complex plane, somehow we can we can find uh, these points of intersection in a complex plane. We can do this. But I solved the challenge algebraically, not geometrically. Yeah, we solved the challenge algebraically, and this is my approach to this challenge. So we hope you understand my explanation. I hope you learned something new. You can also write your question, write your notes to this challenge. This is not like easy challenge, to be honest. Yeah, because there's like a lot of a lot of things right here. So we hope you learn a little bit, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe more right here. Maybe my a lot of teachers watch my videos. So I, I want you to see your response to this challenge. It will be really interesting to read about it because this is like not a general approach and we will not we don't know what will happen in in, in in like infinity what will happen when k is is for example uh, 1.3 like uh, 2.6 we don't know what will happen there but when k is not equal to 0 k is integer k is 1 2 3 and m is integer we know that this is our solution and yeah this is my notes about this challenge also thank you for your for your support if this video is helpful in any way you can also support me with a like with a comment i really appreciate it and thank you for your support thank you for your for your kind response i really appreciate it so see you in the next videos have a great day